to today's tutorial. We'll be going through the last question, which is the DLL question. So let's go through it. So I'm going to open the question paper. So there's the question paper, and then we go to the last question. So this is the last question, right? So we there's quite a lot involved, but we'll find a way to work to, to work with it. So I'm gonna use VS Code to to create these files, right? So I'm going to do, 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 do. okay. So let me. It's fine. Let me create a folder for the for it. So I'm going to say. Um, okay, you need to open the terminal. And then print working directory ls and then cd. Let's save it under desktop. So desktop. And then what do we currently have on the desktop? It's only that text file. So now I'm going to create the file. So I'm going to say Again, to create the folder first, so mkdir. Um, let me say question question four, right? So there's the there's the folder. So I'm gonna move into that folder. Then I'm going to so let me open the folder here in VS Code since I since I have it now. So under desktop, there's the question four folder. Then I'm gonna open it. All right, so there's the folder. And then I'm gonna open the terminal again. Then now I'm gonna create the files, right? So let's create, um, so I need a header file. So let's look at what this one is called. So it's called generate network, right? So it's generating something. It's, re it's related to a B cell, right? So I'm just gonna create the header file and call it B cell dot h right there's the header file and then i'm also going to create a main dot cpp file and then i'm going to clear and then i'm going to close and then i'm going to create the header file so since i'm not using code blocks i will have to write it from scratch so if not defined Right. What's not defined? B cell underscore H. Then you should what define B cell underscore H, and then end if B cell underscore H. So there's the header file. So if the header file is not defined, then define the header file, and then end its definition here. That's what it means. So we have the header file, it exists now. So let's see, which one are we gonna start with? So we're gonna start with 4.1, right? Which is the main.cpp. So what I'll do is, you see that link that I uploaded? I'm gonna update that link. So I'm gonna add this folder. So, so that you know that this is question four. So let me also open the main.cpp. And then I'm gonna include the IO stream. And then I'm gonna include the main function. And then I'm gonna return exit success or return zero, whatever, in whatever way you wanna write, do it. So write code for the main, for your main.cpp file, right? They said main.cpp, so that's why I also called it main.cpp that explicitly links to this DLL and calls the above function by providing the length of the desired list as a parameter. So you can provide any length, that it doesn't really matter, right? So there's the function that we're trying to call. And you see that um, this function, right, it's it's a function we don't you see when you dig into the dll dll right 
you don't really care about what it's returning. All you're trying to do is link to that function. So we have this gen function and you should pay attention to the name. The name is very important. So let's go to our um, main.cpp. So in order to make use of all these things, I need to include the windows dot h header file. Uh, please update your include path. Uh, I cannot open source file windows dot h. Yeah, I'm not currently on a Windows operating system. Probably that's why. Oh, oh, what is this? Yeah, I think that's the main problem. I should have used code blocks, but it's fine. We're just gonna stick with this. So that's the header file you must use. It's windows.h and it's a capital W, I remember. So it's for this is fine. So now what we need to do is when you see when you link to the DLL, right? We're gonna get we're gonna call the function which gets the address of, of the function, right? So that means I, I would need to point to that function. Just pay attention, you're gonna call a function. We're gonna make use of a function that's part of the windows.h header file. That will that will um, link to that to this gen a, j, gen a function. So basically it will return a pointer to that function, right? It will return a pointer to that function. So since it will return a point to that function or an ad the address to that function, I need to create a function pointer type, right? And I need to create it using type definition or type def. So I'm going to say type def in place of int, because remember addresses, right, in C++, they actually stored as integer types. So that's why we do it this way. So in place of an int, play, replace it with this function pointer. What is the function pointer? So remember, remember when you're doing function pointers in your very first practical, and I did explain that. So if you forgot, go back and revisit function pointers. So write code for a main.cpp that explicitly links and calls the above function. So we need to call this above function, but in order to call it, we, we go, there's a function that we're gonna use, which is part of the windows.h header file. That function that we're gonna use, it will return a pointer to the function. So hence we define a function pointer to make things simple for ourselves because we need to store it somewhere, right? And it's called gen, gen a, right? But then you can call this function pointer any, you can give it any name, right? I'm gonna call generate generate what um, creates a function. Yeah, you see, creates a function pointer type. That's what we're trying to achieve, which is true. It's it's good that C is able to pick up that to pick it up. But remember, we are pointing to a function that has a parameter. You see it as one integer as a parameter. So I also need to specify that this function. It needs to take in a parameter which is of type int, which is one parameter. You see that they're putting one int. You don't put in the, you don't do this, don't do spiritual things, don't say hello, whatever, don't just pass types because it doesn't really matter what the names are. All we are do using this function pointer for is to store what, it will, what will be returned after trying to link to this function that they're telling us to link to, which is this gen in function so let's let's start right so we we need to be able to load the the library right remember what we talked about when i talked about um dlls if you did watch the video and you didn't fast forward you guys have a tendency of fast forwarding the laws of fast forward your marks don't worry so with DLLs, they are called shared libraries in environments like Unix or Linux, right? They call them shared libraries, which is true because you share them. You're gonna have to go back to that video to, to understand the DLLs. I did explain them 
I did explain them a bit better. I took my precious time explaining everything there. So, and then they're called DLLs in Windows, right? But then the key word here is library. They are shared libraries, right? So it's a library. So since it's a library, we, it's going to be straightforward. We're going to call a function called load library. That's the function we're going to call, which loads a library, which is a DLL, right? So what library is it called? They gave you a name. It's gen, generate network dot DLL. That's the library's name. And I need to put it in a string because this function expects you to pass in a string. Let me see if it, it's able, to, okay, it's not able to pick it up. Yeah, I guess the issue is here. I need to be on a Windows platform. And then this function, right, will return, it doesn't matter what you, it doesn't matter what you do, right? Like basically, it doesn't matter how you approach or how, how you store this fact, whatever's returned here. So the load library, right? It, it You can use either the age instance data type or age module data type. That's, that's what the load library returns. So load library, that's what it returns, right? So uh, returned, let me say returned by load load library. So that's what it returns. It either returns an H instance or an H module. Why am I saying it's either? Because in current Windows operating systems, right? Or current, yeah, let's just say current Windows operating system because we are coding for the Windows operating system. H instance and H modules are actually the same type, right? Under the hood, it's they are defined like this. I was checking the the Microsoft uh, documentation about it, so it's defined like this. It's a handle H instance like this, right? And then type def handle H module. So irregardless which one you use, it's exactly the same. So what does the H instance mean. So the H inside this keyword stands for a handle. So if it's H instance, it means it's a handle to an instance. And then if it's H module, if it's H module, it means that it's a handle to a module, right? By module, we mean DLL or executable. That's what we mean, right? So obviously you see that it, it makes sense to use either H instance or H module to, to store to 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 store um, the handle the handle to, to the DLL that has returned. Because this return, this load library, after loading this library, it returns a handle to that library or to that DLL. So I can either use H instance here like this and say H instance is equal to, because that's what it returns, right? Or I can just say H module. So I'm just gonna use H module because that's what was used on your slides, which is fine. And then, this can either find, it can find that library, okay, it can succeed to in loading the library or it may not, it may not succeed. So I need to check that, right? So check if um, it succeeded in loading the library. So I'm gonna do in a simple if statement. So if not H module, since I'm not currently on the Windows operating system, I can't check which function you can you call, but this is the simplest way to, to, to work with it, right? So I'm going to output an error here. So standard error. The error will just say that um, failed to load. Um, I'll just say failed to load this file. So I'm gonna put in the name there. Failed to load followed by 
the name and then put an end of line character and then I'm going to return one right and then yeah, and then I return I exit the app right so when you return the one or any any value other than zero the operating system it it picks up it picks it up as something went wrong that's why at the end you will return a zero to say that everything went well if something did indeed if something um did indeed go well so that's pretty much what you do so if we're able to find or get an instant get a handle to this dll here if we're able to then execute but if you failed to get the handle this will run and then it's going to output an error and then once we are done remember we created this function pointer right so it's called generate basically we defined a new type it's, it's going to be called generate and it takes in that parameter we don't have to worry about the parameter the main point is that it takes in it is is it is it is of that name so now what we need to do is, um, what do we need to do after this, after loading? Mm. So now I'm kind of forgetting what we're supposed to do. You write the, let me think, you load the library and then after loading the library, and then, yeah, okay. And then you get the, the address of the function. So basically you point to that function. Basically you find the function within the DLL, right? So now I find the function or it's, it's another word for function is called procedure. So I, I'm gonna find the function or procedure address so that I point to the function. My main goal is to point to the function Hence, I created the function pointer here. Function pointer because I'm going to point to a function. That's why I created a function pointer. Because this method that I'm going to use, it will get the procedure or function address that I'm looking for. And that's why I say the name of the function is very important. We're going to use this name over here. So this is the syntax, right? You use a function called get proc address, right? It's called get proc address. And this get proc address function, it takes in two parameters. It's either in, a, it takes in a, a handle to the library, to the DLL. So basically it takes in um, a handle to the library and also a string representing the function name. So that handle, it can either be an H module or H instance, whatever the case, as long as it's, an, it's a handle. So what does the function get proc address mean? The function get proc address, it means proc stands for procedure. So get procedure. And we did talk about procedure being a synonym for function. So in other words, it's like get, get function address. That's what it means, right? Get procedure address, get function address. So that's basically what it means. So it's literally what we are trying to do. So that sometimes programming is straightforward if you understand the meaning of functions, the meaning of things. So this function, right, is going to return a pointer to this function over here that we've specified, that we've told this proc address function to go look for in the DLL. How does it know which DLL to look for? because I need to pass in this H module, which is a handle that points to my DLL. It's a lot to take in, but once you get a grasp of it, it's going to be easier to, to do. So let's put pass in the handle. I've called my handle H module. So I'm gonna pass the handle here. And then what is the function name? There's the function name, it's called gen -ain. and you need capitalization is very important computers are not forgiving like human beings if you misspelled something it doesn't infer what you try what you're trying to do or doesn't try to conclude what you're trying to do it doesn't work that way 
you have to write exactly what you mean. Say what you mean. Don't say what you're trying to mean. That's not the, that's that's not how the computer operates. So this will return a pointer to this function over here. So I need, I need to point to that function by what? Making use of this function pointer type that I've defined. How do I do that? I say generate, right? This will be equal, I say generate, and then, so the type is, is gonna be generate, but that's the name, that's the data type I've defined for that function pointer, right? And then I can also, it's fine. You can also call it J, gen in here. You can still call it gen in again. Doesn't really matter. Because here, I'm just passing this as a string for this get proc address function to go find it. But then what's going to happen here, right, is that on the left hand side, I'm going to have a pointer generate. That's the data type. And then on the other side, I'm going to have a pointer to some procedure, right, or to some function. So you see that they are incompatible. They are not the same. On the right-hand side, it's going to be that. On the left-hand side, it's going to be this. So we need to cast. And if you remember, in casting, when you talked about casting from one pointer to another, why, why am I saying one pointer to another? Because it's of this pointer. It's not really, okay, it's not really pointer procedure. I'm just saying procedure to make it easier to understand. But then this side, it's it's a it's a pointer, it's actually pointer generate. That's the actual type. How do I know? Because I create I created it or I defined it at the top. So you see that we have different types of pointers. Yeah, just know they're different. This one is generate pointer. This one is let just say this is proc pointer or pro procedure point. So there are two different pointer types. So casting is required. So there's two ways you could cast. You could cast using pointer generate like this, and that will be sufficient, that will be fine. And then another way you can cast is by using reinterpret cast. Remember, we talked about reinterpret cast for those who watch my videos. Reinterpret cast, it helps us to cast from one pointer to another. So you you'd pass the whole function Remember the whole function returns the, the address. And then you'd say pointer um, generate like this. So it casts, it takes one pointer and then it casts it to another pointer type so that this, send, this statement will be correct. So this is, there's two ways to approach it. You can use reinterpret cast or you can use the C style type of casting. So C style casting would be this. You just put it in round brackets and then you cast it to the pointer type that's on the left hand side. So that this assignment, when it, when it assigns, remember the equal sign, it takes whatever this is and then comes and, put, and stores it inside whatever's on the left hand side. So they need to be compatible. The types need to be compatible. And then if that happens, then, so we can, fa it can fail to find the library, right? So if it fails, how do we know? Basically that's when gen in is equals to null pointer. So it's not pointing to anything. So that means we failed to get the procedure address. It's either maybe, there was a wrong, we passed in a wrong name, and maybe it was a small n here instead of a capital N. So obviously there's no function like that. It failed somehow. So if it failed, then we know that it gen a and it is, is pointing to null. That means if we failed to find to find it. So since we failed to find it, we need to output an error. So C error um, failed to find procedure in DLL. So we failed to find that procedure inside the DLL. But then once we are done here, there's another thing that we need to do. We need to free, we need to call the free library function, which takes in the H module, 
Right, so that we free the memory that was allocated. Because at this point, remember at this point in time here, we're still loading. And then here, we tried to allocate, to point to that um, proc address or whatever. So memory has been allocated, so we need to free that memory. And then we can just return maybe using two. They just re return using two. And then after this, if everything is passed, if this if this was skipped, that means we're able to find the function over here. So now we can print, right? So now I can print, so generate a number of cells. So now I can print. So I've I've used the exact same name, J Gen A. You can use any other names, still fine. So now I'm going to um, use the function. So to use the function, I'll just output, I'll just say output gen in, and then put an, an, an end of line character. And then I can pass in any value. So let me say 42, right? So I just pass in 42. And then that's pretty much all you have to do inside the in for 4.1. 4, 4 so all of this starting from windows.h, get a file, all of this, starting from IO stream, all of this, this whole thing, that's the full, that's how you get the full 10 marks. So here you just call the function as, as, as usual. So that's pretty much how you link to that. And then once you're done, do not forget to free the live, free the memory. Because remember, if this fails, that means we we won't free the memory. And we do we actually do not want this to 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 pass. We want it to fail so that we can actually link ex link explicitly to our link link explicitly to our library or DLL. And then once we are done, we free the memory. So free memory. So it's sort of like free memory, but at the same time, it's also like unlink to that DLL. We just unlink or cut the code, the connection to that DLL. So that's pretty much everything here. So let's define our header file so they say write the code for the dll's header file so let's write the code for the header file where this function is needs to be added so i'm going to copy this function and then let's start creating so to define the header file the dll i'm going to say if defined what if what is defined the header file so i'm gonna say and then we're gonna put in we, we, we typically put in building to denote that this will be built as a dll right and what what will what will be built as a dll this header file so we typically do that right and then if it is defined then we define our we define our DLL right. So I'm gonna say B cell. I'm just gonna call it B cell underscore API. That's what I'm gonna call it. And then I'm gonna say underscore underscore declare um, spec right or declare specification. So DLL export and then it's a DLL. Okay, let's just say. DLL import. Doesn't really matter in what order you put them, but I'm just gonna put it in this order. So else define B cell underscore API underscore underscore declare spec DLL export. And then I need to obviously end the definition, right? So 
if it is defined, this header file, we can build it for for DLL purposes. Then I define if I define so basically this DLL can do both. You can you can import this DLL. So DLL import. You can export this DLL. Basically send it to someone else. So now we have this. So that means anything that is this label, B cell API, is going to be exported or imported depending on the needs of the user. So I'm going to paste that function. There it is. So I've pasted the function, but then there's there's going to be this name mangling issue. So we need to disable it. How do we disable it? Instead of it being exported as a C++ um, function. So the whole purpose of the name mangling issue is that it's going to be a problem. Why? Because in, if you export it as a C++ function, 90% of the time it can only be compiled in a C, in, a, in another C++ project, and we do not want that. We want it to be imported in any language, even in Python, you can call this function even in Python. How do we achieve that? We disable name mangling. So I say, I use the extend keyword to say this will be external, right? It's from the keyword from the word external, but then it's going to be external or exported as an external thing in what way? As a C function. And then I put this and then I put it within here. It's going to be exported as a C function. That means that it can be included in any programming language. You can import this function in any programming language. So now we've disabled disabled name mangling right so one since now name mangling has been disabled we are good to go but then we are not actually good to go because this won't be exported remember what i said we need to put in this word here right before the data type like this or after but then typically i put it after Let's see. Um, function definition not found. Blah blah blah. C or C plus expected. A semicolon error type B cells. That's fine. So it doesn't. It doesn't see it inside um, the B cell dot cpp. That's why it's giving me this error. It says that. Um, Identify DL export not defined. Oh, I think I did it in the wrong order. Let me just double check. I think you start by saying export and then you say import. Is that the case? But then it shouldn't be a problem. Let me see. Yeah, it doesn't, let's not think about it too much. You see that for me, the configuration is Linux, right? Since I'm on a Linux operating system. So this is gonna give you a lot of errors on my key, in my case. Yeah, this, it doesn't matter in what order you put this. You can start with DLL export or DLL import, one and the same thing. It's just complaining because I'm not in a Windows operating system. So this this only works on our Windows operating system because remember we are building it for Windows, right? We're building a DLL. Hence we say DLL import. I'm not building like shared libraries. In other operating systems, they're called shell shared libraries. So that's pretty much all you had to do. So you can either put it be, before the return type or after the return type, this name so that you link it to be exported or imported with the, with the DLL. So that's it, that's the whole paper. So I hope this clarifies a lot of things.